Well, hello everybody, and welcome to another episode of Derp Your Hubs. So today we are in the Top Mock Studios F22A Raptor, and we're going to be leaving Las Vegas and going to Edwards Air Force Base. So we're going from Nellis Air Force Base to Edwards Air Force Base. And we're setting up our flight plan in the world map. That's how you would set your flight plan up. But let's go ahead and let's adjust our weight and balance. Give it a second. And you see it's going to give us drop tanks. And I'm going to say I don't want drop tanks. So I get rid of them. These two being the drop tanks. And I have all my weapons, which are static, because I bought this from Just Flight. I didn't buy it from the marketplace. So we're good. Now, some people were saying the drop tanks don't, you can't take them off in the sim. Well, you can take them off in the world map. I know that works. So let's go ahead and hit fly. And let's get ready to fly. Let's bring our throttle back. Make sure everything is zeroed on our flight control, on our throttle. I know I just calibrated it. So the plane's loading, and the one thing I want to talk about really quick is the nose wheel steering. Um, so I've had a couple problems, and it's not just with this plane, with all the planes, since we now have nose wheel steering on everything versus the uh, rudder pedal controls. And sometimes it's really frustrating. I think there's a bug in it. So let's, I hope we take off straight. I made sure that my my nose wheel is straight and centered. And I can even go to the outside of the plane and I can say, let's check that, right? And I can say, oh look, okay. So it doesn't really show on the animation, which is fine. Okay, well, that was just kind of a gripe, you know, mine. I don't know if you've had that problem and it's like there's a big crosswind and there's not, it's your nose wheel steering. So make sure that's centered. And it's not your rudder pedals because I thought it was my rudder pedals and they were calibrated. Well, anyhow, let's go into using the autopilot. So you could start cold and dark. I started hot on the runway, right? So here's your, like, your instrument panel with all of your displays and your heads-up display and your center display, and they all have names. If you read the manual, It'll explain to you what everything is. I'll also show you how I learned how to do this. I actually read the manual this time. So, I know that I have a course from um, Nellis Air Force Base to Edwards. I know that I am not using live player mode right now. So, I can sit on the runway and do this. If you're in live player mode, I strongly recommend you don't do that because sometimes you make other players upset. But before we take off, and I would say you do this in parking, you could do it in flight, too. But I would say you should do it when you're parked, before you take off, before you taxi. Um, so we're just going to do it on the runway. So I have my buttons up here, COM1, COM2, um, NAV, I don't even know what this is. Um, your IFF, your altitude, your, your HUD, it shows you different things on your HUD. Now, other your DVR which doesn't work but we want to set some things in the autopilot so pushing the autopilot button doesn't engage the autopilot it just takes you to the autopilot menu you push this button it'll engage the autopilot master you push that it'll do that and it tells you what your source is nav1 blah blah blah, blah. we don't want it to be nav1 we want it to be GPS so I push that arrow till it said GPS see it was nav1 nav2 I want it on GPS um, because I set it up in the map menu and I have auto throttle nav approach but if I push auto throttle it's gonna take off on it's gonna engage the auto throttle so I don't want that if I go to the bottom scroll see it says one of two and now it says two of two it says like altitude vertical speed speed so let's set the speed. So let's click speed. We did that, it says set speed. And I want to set it to 350 knots. Then I want to hit mark. 
and it changed from 120 to 350 and it's now oh it's there now um i'm fine with indicated airspeed i don't want it to be on mock and i hit autopilot again and that'll take me back to all of this stuff source gps auto throttle again we go to the bottom and we set our speed so let's set our vertical speed to well we set it by clicking vertical speed and then we punch in I'm going to set it to 2500 and hit mark and it's now going from 0 to 2500 so that's going to be my rate of climb so 3000 feet I don't want an altitude of 3000 feet I want an altitude of 25 thousand feet right not 2500 but 25,000 I hit mark my altitude is now 25,000 so everything's punched in I should be ready to go I can release my parking brake if it's set which it should be by default and we can start taxing aha boy don't you like doing that you like leaning one way or the other so let's get off the runway and fight the um, nose wheel steering as we take off. Sorry. Yeah, that's why I'm wobbly. I'm fighting the nose wheel steering. Seems to be a thing since they did it. And we're off. I don't know if I'm the only one who has that problem, and it's not just with the F-22. It's been with a bunch of different aircraft. It's like a sim thing. So we're up. Hit the gears. And we're there. And I've tried a couple different tips and tricks to fight it. I was using it as I was taking off. But that's really obnoxious. So I've noticed that in the F-22 here at Nellis it happens. I'm not sure. It's definitely a glitch in the sim. Um, I hope they fix it in you know sim update 10 that's coming out for everybody so here we are so we're taking off and we should be Nellis Tower DRPY 05 frequency change just so they don't bother me later and let's crank back on the throttle a little bit because I don't need to be going 412 knots so I'm actually off the magenta line a little bit and that's how I want to be because we're demonstrating the autopilot, so no, it's not on. We can roll the aircraft. Right, we can look at this thing from the outside if we zoom out. Hmm. A touchy today with the graphics. Like I said, we can roll it. Right. How fast are we going? We're kind of low, but. If I don't overstress it, I should be able to do a loop. And this thing does get touchy, by the way. I love this plane. See, it's going to do that, and then it's going to try and stall me out. So I actually have to nose down a little bit and build up some airspeed, because I'm only doing, you know, 80 knots, 100 knots, and I get that kind of um, game show spin right and I can complete my loop real simple because I actually have the you know the flyby wire and all the fancy stuff set so I did a little loop there that was fun and no this aircraft you know I've only flown it a few times and I'm still learning how to fly it but you know, the autopilot feature could be something that's kind of important. Because let's say you're flying with a bunch of people and you're flying real long distances and you don't want to drift off course. Let's say you want to get up and get yourself like a sandwich on a really long flight. Whatever it might be. Right? You know, all of a sudden someone wants you to get up and do something and you don't want to be like, I'm in the middle of flying! You know, that's kind of mean. So... You know, you'd want your autopilot. So we're definitely off course, right? I mean, I've definitely taken us off course. And I did that on purpose. 
right? To prove the point. There's the magenta line. And we're going to let it fly itself at this point. Because we're headed away from our course. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit... Well, we're going to get rid of the altitude lock, which shouldn't be on. Okay. We're going to hit autopilot. It says source GPS, nav approach. We're going to click master. Now, that's going to turn the autopilot on. Right? We said nav A, so you want nav A. Right? Now, you want it to say a nav, you want it to say A, but you want it to say source GPS. Because it's going to turn us in to our flight plan. But don't we also want to be traveling at the speed we wanted? I mean, 432 knots isn't bad. Let's look at what that looks like on our fuel. Well, we're all right. But let's just do the whole nine yards. Let's do the whole ball of wax, right? So I can go down here and I hit speed and it says set speed. No, we don't want to set the speed. Go back to the... Autopilot. Wait a minute. Why is my speed set at 120 again? Well, that could have been my goof, so let's actually just go back and, and set the speed all over again. Hit speed. Set speed. We wanted 350. I was pretty sure I set the speed and the altitude. Did I not? So there we go. I typed in 350. I hit mark, and it goes from 120 to 350. Alright. Let's go back and take a look at our altitude. So, source GPS. Uh, I, I'm going crazy. I thought we did that already. So, I want auto throttle. So, if I hit auto throttle and it now says A, it should drop me down to 350 knots. And the plane's slowly coming to the magenta line. See, down here we're coming back to our flight plan. I don't want it on approach mode. And I'm not going to mess with the auto throttle. And I want to climb. Yep. Altitude's 25,000 feet, but I want to set my vertical speed, so... I set my vertical speed. Alright. So don't do this over and over again. 25... 2,500. Right is my vertical speed. So I hit vertical speed lock. Instead of altitude, I hit vertical speed lock. And it should climb to an altitude of 25,000 at 2,500, what, feet per minute, you would think, at 350 knots. And we should hit our desired altitude of 25,000 feet. So, sorry, I got a little frustrated there. But you see, our autopilot's on, navigation holds on, and it's on the GPS. We know it is. Vertical speed holds on, and the indicated airspeed hold is on at 350. So we're set with all this, and the GPS nav. So you've got everything going that you need, right? And at this point, our F-22 should just continue to go ahead towards our magenta line. And like I said, range in. It shortens your distance, but tells you. Range out, see, 40, 80 out you go farther 512 i don't know how you know, 1024 miles wow so that's like for a long flight i think this only has like a range of like 1500 or maybe it was like 2000 miles it's 2000 miles you have to look it up when you buy the plane i think it's 2000 miles or 1800 with drop tanks so and right here i'm looking at my you know my engine settings my nozzle settings whatever so and I have that displayed and we're coming towards the magenta line that's great so the plane is actually flying itself and it's eventually gonna hit this line and then it's gonna roll and we'll see that in a second so if I zoom out I'm climbing and we're going towards our flight plan Right? And I can take all these really cool shots. I can go have a sandwich, whatever. Pour myself a cup of coffee. But I wanted to show you something else. So, we don't really need any of the other windows open. Oh, there we go. See, it's going to do it all by itself. See, I was going to do something, but 
Oh, there it goes. And so now it's hitting the magenta line, and it's straightening itself out so that it can go ahead and fly our course, or our flight plan, back to Edwards at 350 knots. Right? And you can see right there, we can see it's banking, and we can do it inside the cockpit too. And you're going to see on the heads-up display that, you know, it's banking as it gets back on course. So you got both views. All right, I'm not going to touch anything until it levels out. And it's still getting back on course. And we're, like, you know, far off from Edwards at 350 knots. Flying over the Nevada desert. And I'm going to go back over the autopilot system for you guys in case I confused you. Um, you know, I know it's confusing, and I'm going to say read the manual and study the manual. But I gave you a basic overview of how it works, and now we're flying right on our flight plan at 350 knots. I'm going to show you something else. So... This is the cool part, right? I mean, now I can sit here and we can fly all the way to Edwards, right? And when it hits, it's almost at 25,000 feet. You can see it's at 24,980. It's not really going any higher, so we've reached our altitude for the most part. And 24,980 is very close to 25,000, and it looks like the plane is leveled out because it's no longer climbing. So, that's good enough. That's close enough to 25,000 feet. So these are all of our, you know, our thrust nozzles, right? This is our engine thrust nozzles, oil pressure, and the engine RPM. So if I click menu, and I can do it on either one, but we're just going to do it here, so we don't disturb our displays. If I click menu, it now takes me to all these engine, um, let's see. Engine's where we were, right? Menu. Sin is, it basically shows you our thrust as it's going back. And I don't know what all this different stuff is. You know, your center of gravity, your control. Have fun. I pushed some of these. Like, I pushed leaf flaps and it did something weird. So I'm not doing that again. Until I read the manual, top to bottom. But if I go to STA, right? I mean, we have MMD, right? Which is what we're already staring at here. So why do you need two MMDs, right? I mean, you could. You could just do it here. But let's go to menu, and let's go to station. So if you look at station, I got all these little circles here, right? And you're like, well, what are they? Well, they're missiles, right? And the plane's armed. Because like I said, um, if you buy these planes from the marketplace... Microsoft has a policy that they're not going to sell planes with weapons, but you can buy them elsewhere with weapons, and the weapons don't work, they just show up on the plane. The F-22, what does it really matter if you have the doors closed, right? I mean, you know, maybe you want to show them, so you go, like I said, you, you go to, what was it, STA, right? STA, right? And it shows you this, which is obviously, like, stores, and you push the button called door, and the little animation goes there and it shows the doors have opened really quick and just like the f-22 has in real life there's all of your armaments right got all your missiles and so you can say oh look i can i can show my missiles you can't fire them but you can show them so if you ever want to see them that's where they are like in the f-35 where you can open them up you can open up here too and you can also close it and then you know plane goes back to being stealthy because it doesn't have, you know, just reduce the radar cross-section by closing the door. All right. So that's how you would get your, your weapons going. Now, I'm just cruising along at 25,000 feet and I'm keeping it kind of low today. I don't really want to go all that high. This plane goes like, I think I was like at 60,000 feet plus. And then it started giving me like pressurization issues. But, you know, 
Um, we're just going to keep it low because I want to enjoy the scenery as we scoot along. Now, let's just kind of go over the autopilot again really quick. So, I should just set everything up. And, you know, it might be confusing to you. When you punch it in one time and then you hit mark, you know, like, I mean, let's say, like, let's say I want to change my speed from 350, like on the before, I'd say, well, hey, I wanted to go faster. And by the way, this aircraft does Mach 1 without afterburners, and I'll show you. So let's change our speed. All right? Hit autopilot. And let's go to... Well, we already know the auto throttle's on. So we can leave it on. Because we're in the air. We can hit speed. Set speed. And let's call it um, 450. Let's go 100 knots faster. She's got like Mach 1.6. 1.4. Um, without the afterburners engaged. So 450, I hit mark. And it's now going to crank the throttle up and it's gonna start traveling at 450 knots and you're gonna see oh look Mach 94 at 400 Mach 97 99 Mach 1 is 423 so it's gonna be Mach 1.08 ish right now the afterburner is not on it's not just the throttle animation isn't on, it's the afterburner isn't on. And I'm just going to turn my landing lights off. The afterburner's not on. And yes, we're going supersonic. But the afterburner is not on. Because the F-22 can go Mach 1 without afterburner. It can go supersonic without afterburner. That's great, you know, isn't that great? So you would guess that means you don't waste a lot of fuel? I don't know. The faster you go, the more fuel you burn. And when you're on afterburner, you burn lots of fuel. But we're not right now. So that's kind of like, I mean, you know, I got my fuel settings down here. So I don't need to see them up there. But you can also do it down here, right? I mean, if I want to see my fuel up here, I can go to menu, right? And I can click on menu. And you can also click on config, but you could say, I want to see my fuel, which is already down there. I want to go back to menu. If I hit config, right in here, it'll say, what do you want to see? Well, I have MMD in menu. If I push MMD, well, radar range, map configuration menu, toggle required D map. Same thing, TFK. So, you know what? I'm just going to go back. Go to menu. We're going to stay at a config. Because if I go to config, it just tells me that, right? And if I go to menu, it just takes me back here. So let's put the engines back up. For now, I can hit control, right? But right now, we don't need that. We're going to need control later. Then, you know, I suppose you could do the same thing down here, right? You have, like, your MMD, your station, your fuel, and your config. And it says, what do you want to do? And you hit MMD, and it says, hey, calibrate it. So we're just going to go back, hit menu, and where were we? We were like, nope. See, silly pony, what's wrong with you? We were at menu. Really? I wasn't at engines, I wasn't at config, I wasn't at stations. I wasn't at fuel. I was on MMD. Right. Okay. See, I still have something to learn. And so you can also see that you got your heads-up display, like, you know, right here in the corner. Again, like I said, read a manual. Manual's your friend. And I said the DVR button doesn't work. And I can also do stuff down here. I'm not sure what the side buttons do, if anything. I mean, if there's nothing there, they're not going to do anything. Right? If I config, it just takes me to the same thing. So I hit back, I hit menu, and where were we were fuel down here. And how close are we to Edwards? We're real close. It's right down there. So that's some of the cool stuff you can do. And let's land this bird. But let's turn off the auto throttle, right? 
Auto throttle's off. Let's crank it back. Autopilot. Um, that's fine. And I don't need altitude hold. So autopilot, auto throttle's off. I could turn the nav off. It doesn't really matter. I could go to approach. Um, heading. Heading's not there. Sources on GPS. Turn the autopilot off. Now it says altitude hold. So when I go to altitude, see right there, altitude 24,000, altitude 2 of 2. I don't know how to turn the altitude hold off, but it's already kind of off. Right, well, there you go. So, it's not turning off, and that was actually a glitch that was supposed to be solved with the um, update, and it looks like it's not solved. So, and we could always do that. Oh, it gives me either or. What if I just hit cancel? I'm just going to make my altitude zero. Just for a joke, right? Ah, oh, isn't that funny? My altitude zero. But it doesn't matter. Oh, and now the altitude locks off. Well, hey, look. That's how you can turn it off. Set it to zero and then turn the altitude lock off. So, anyhow, I'm like, I just flew over Edwards. And I want to land. So... I don't know why it does that, but you can just turn the altitude off that way. So nearest airport list, Edwards should be like the first. We want regular Edwards. Tower. Full stop landing. Right. You're, you're like literally past it. You're right over it. We're right over it. 23 left. There's Edwards. 23 left. So we're going to have to circle around. Okay. We are. Right. So let's do that. So I have a key bound for my... Um... Brakes for my speed brakes. And that's Edwards. So I'm gonna turn my, hit my speed brakes as I nose down so I don't rip the wings off the plane and I don't overstress it. And, you know, oh, oh yeah, I have the, I have the G-force effects turned off so we don't black out or red out. I know. And let's bring our trim up. Isn't it cool you can do that? So, we wanted 23 left, which is the big one. Now, my landings have not been terrific in this, so bear with me on that. They just haven't been. But let's record it. So I can play it back. I'm probably going to bounce. I might even scrape the, the um, tail. Because this isn't like an F-15 or an F-16. Um, where you can really nose it up. You almost kind of have to flat land this aircraft. Let's just crank it. Alright. Speed brake was only on so that we could um, descend rapidly or dive without ripping the wings off. And I've got plenty of fuel to kick in some afterburner. This thing's a beast, by the way.
And I'm not going to use the ILS to land. Let's do this old school. Maybe even give them a scary pony landing. We said 23 left, which is the big long one on our left. I thought they said 23 left. Maybe I'm wrong. But this really is a fun plane. Drop our gears. Kill our speed brake. And it's gonna auto flap it, by the way. You'll see that when we when I show you in the replay. Okay. I always bounce this ever since I started. I don't know why I always bounce this plane. But I've only flown it like five times. And I've only successfully landed it three. Yes, power, power, pull up, pull up, right? Let's stop that from happening. And you say, well, you're not straight. I know I'm not straight. Speed brake. Goes up just a little bit. We're gonna bounce. We just bounced. I think we just bounced. Maybe. Well, either that or I scraped the butt, but one of the two. Okay. And it's gonna fight us to go straight, right? You got it. Kill the speed brake.
taxi to parking. Use our nose wheel steering and our differential brakes as we gently taxi down the runway and we go to our special parking space. We're going there. Yeah, I would if the nose wheel steering wasn't fighting me. Well, this is an interesting little development. Nose wheel steering seems to be fighting me. So we might not make it to parking. Yeah, I heard you. I just don't know why the nose wheel steering is fighting me today. So we're just gonna park it here. Lady, I heard you. So I'm not sure what's up with my nose wheel steering, but I can't even make it into parking today. How hard I try. So we're just gonna kinda park over here. And I was having problems with this before. We're just gonna park over here in the wrong place. Cause I've been fighting with this nonstop. Maybe I need to bind it to something else that isn't so fidgety. So we're just going to park over here in the wrong place today instead of the ramp. Which is fine. It's a sim. No one cares. The plane's broken. And let's go ahead and let's, you know, just shut her down right here. And they can come tell me. So, how would you shut this down? That's the next thing I'm going to go over. So we're going to shut her down right here. We, we are. I don't have time to deal with, you know, programming glitches. So, I want to shut her down, and I want to be in this menu here. I want to be in the engine menu. Okay? And what I want to do is, I want to, see where it says like thrust, it says menu. I want to click control, and I want to kill the pump for that engine with the ignition. Alright, kill the left generator on the left engine. And you'll see that the left engine is now not running. Then we'll do the same thing for the right engine. Pump, ignition, kill the generator. And that engine's not working. And all of our hydraulic stuff is going out. Right? And, well, I want to open the canopy, because I want to get out of this broken plane. Broken sim, broken plane. And I now want to go to 
this display. I want to click menu, config, sim. And I want the ladder. I want chalks. And let's just say I want tags too. So all my tags are here. And then, as I zoom to the outside of the plane, we're all gone and we have our chalks and our tags and our ladder. And to me, it looks like we're in a safe spot, right? I mean, we're yeah, it's still kind of close, but we're behind that line right there. So there you go, and you got your chocks and your ladder and your remove before flight tags, which you still have all the power on. So you flick the battery switch off, and it gives you the rest of the remove before flight, the plugs, the tags, everything, and you're all set. And you know what? Why don't we actually just because they're going to have to come get this thing. So turn the battery on for a second and say, I want my tow bar on. All right. And it's right there laying in front of the plane. So they can go and get the, send the tug and, and pull this thing because the nose wheel steering's not working. So there you have it, everybody. That's the F-22 Raptor by Top Mock Studios. Um, again, um, the nose wheel steering glitch that you're witness during this flight has not just been for the F-22 it has been for a variety of my aircraft and I'm hoping that I don't have to reinstall the sim again because that's really not a fun thing but I think this plane's a great plane um, even after the second update you know it seems to be working although you know it's kind of questionable I couldn't get the um, altitude hold off without hitting zero and then punching it in and that's what the update was for so um there you have it i like it that's how you use your autopilot you know that's how you fly it with the autopilot and it works um you know if you guys want the weapon version you're gonna have to get it from just flight or if sim market has it you know um which they might you have to get it from them um but if you get it in the marketplace, that's not going to happen. So, great airplane. I'm loving it. Um, you know, I'm still learning how to fly it. And, well, that's pretty much it for this video. So, you guys, thanks for watching. And I look forward to seeing you guys in the skies.